Hey there, I'm Victor in iDesign Products. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use AI image generators like Midjourney to create your very own unique designs. Let's jump right in. All right, here we go. So this is the setup of today's tutorial. It's divided into six chapters and an additional background chapter where I would like to talk to you about why you should use Midjourney in the first place and when does it make sense within the design workflow to use image generators like Midjourney. I will briefly go over how to set things up or at least provide the right sources for you to be able to set it up yourself. Then we get into the introduction, how to do basic prompting, what are the different functions of Midjourney we talk about how you can get inspiration from the dashboard and explore the work of other people, learn from their prompting and their work. In the ideation chapter, I would like to create and work more specifically on cohesive image output that is related to a specific design assignment. That's also where I would like to introduce product design specific prompts. And the outcome of this chapter will also be used in the concept phase, where together with mood boards, we can create concepts that are more in line with our desired outcome and style. And in the last chapter, I just have a quick tip on if you have your final finished design modeled in 3D, how to quickly add context for the render to provide some impression on the user environment. All right, let's start with the background. What is Midjourney? Midjourney is a text image generator. So that means that you can use your natural language words to describe an image and Midjourney and the AI networks behind Midjourney will translate those words and turn them into an image. So you can really use your natural language to create images of also very abstract topics like feelings. You can just write hate, love, um, friendship, and you can be really specific also about just objects in your life, space, architecture, whatever. So there's no limit except your vocabulary in that sense. So why should you use Midjourney? I think one of the biggest selling points or strongest reasons for me to use it is that it's just fun. It's super exciting. I mean, look at all these images that I just made within a couple of minutes. So you have this huge variety in styling. You can do use it for very random things. Like, I don't even know what this kind of Fabergé Easter egg sort of product would be used for, <laughs> but it's, it looks just super nice. Also this thing, there's so much detail and ornament in here. All this variety that Midjourney allows you to manifest by describing it's just like a toy that you want to play with and you can achieve so much with but also in a more functional context one big benefit of midjourney is that you can quickly generate like a huge variety of stunning and really convincing images so within i don't know maybe 15 20 minutes you can have 100 different ideas that are presented in a convincing way that you can show to clients potentially that can help generate ideas for you so fast, give you hints into the directions you might want to go, the materials that you might want to use. Because AI will break with the stereotypical archetypes that we have in mind about certain products, you will also tend to think more out of the box from what I experience and what I see with my colleagues also because you are triggered to put meaning to random images or random parts of an image that you might not otherwise have thought about because they're so far from the context or the product. For example, this image in white here, this looks very dynamic and cool. Could this potentially be a pen holder or does a pen always have to be straight? Why is it straight? So all these questions, even if you don't decide to take over these strange happenings as features into your final design, it can still help you think in new ways about the products and question the very fundaments they are based around at this moment. Right now is the time to jump into 
AI image generation because it will play an increasing role in design. Um, so you shouldn't wait any longer before getting used to working with it. And we will see more and more products that are influenced by AI in design. Is it in the ideation just for inspiration or all the way from zero to product fully AI generated or AI based? Uh, we will have to see. But for young designers or students that are going to be designing soon, I think it can be a really strong selling point for yourself. But obviously, it cannot substitute your original design thinking skills, and it shouldn't. You should be able, as a person and designer, to design concepts by yourself and only really use AI as a tool to help to accelerate and expand your mind but it should not um, it cannot make you a better designer and if you think about the design process where should you decide to use midjourney so the little boat here is the logo of midjourney i would like to say that you should or could also use it irrespective of the phase you're in always for inspiration but if you want to be more specific about it and more targeted in your workflow with using midjourney i would suggest to use it in the ideation and concept phase at least this is also where i use it and where i see my colleagues using it for the ideation it can really help you find interesting forms and original configurations at the very beginning for the concept phase you can use it to really find stylized ways to explore details that you already um, decided in terms of function and basic shaping, but you still need to find some variety or want to explore alternative options to your designs. As you know now why you should use Midjourney and when to use it, it's time to set things up. And therefore, I would briefly like to go over the process of setting things up. Midjourney works together with Discord. At this moment, they don't have their own platform to run Midjourney. They do have a website, but that is basically to access your image files and also explore the work of other people. But in order to make use of Midjourney's functions, you will have to use it in the context of Discord. So you have to download Discord and then subscribe to Midjourney. You will have to join the Midjourney server and then you can also set up your own server for Midjourney. I will also provide the link for a quick start guide that will guide you through all the steps. But basically, you will just have to download Discord for your platform and verify your email address. Once you did that, you can go to the Midjourney website and log in with your Discord account. You do have to subscribe to a Midjourney plan. So Midjourney is not free. At this moment, there are four different plans. If you are not willing to spend any money, there are alternatives like DALI, the Bing Image Creator, Stable Diffusion, or Adobe Firefly. Not all of them are free. The main difference between the plans is more or less the amount of fast hours you get. That means that the more you pay, the more images you can generate in the highest speed available to the service. And starting from the Pro plan, you also have access to the Stealth mode which is relevant in the context of commercial use of Midjourney. The stealth mode means that everything you do is remaining private as long as you do it on your own server. And even if people are visiting your profile on the Midjourney website, they can only see the images that you want to share publicly. All the rest is hidden and only visible to you. But that also means with the basic plan and standard plan, everything you do will be visible for other people that come onto your profile and want to check out what you do. But let's say you decided for a plan, you should create your own server and invite the mid-journey bot. So by that I mean go to Discord, create your own server and use the link that I will also share in the description below to create your own server. Then on the public uh, mid-journey server, just go onto this little icon at the top that lists all the people that are currently active or inactive also. Choose the mid-journey bot and add it to the server you just created. So you can 
do your work in a more private space and will not be flooded by other people's prompting and other people's comments. So I highly recommend to do that. So you have your own space where you work in to generate your images. But again, be aware that even if you use Midjourney on your own server, it is still visible for people outside if you are not using the pro plan or the mega plan. Of course, you do still own the commercial rights to every image that you generate on Midjourney, but AI images are a highly debated topic in terms of regulation at the moment. So I just want you to be aware that if you work for a client, you might be using images that end up being part of a design or at least part of the process towards a final design that will make the market. These clients might not want these images to be publicly available to everyone that visits your profile on Midjourney.